Do you want to know what separates the top performers versus everyone else? Do you want to know what separates the top 3% income earners in the world versus everyone else? Do you want to know that one slight difference that if you can simply adopt, understand, practice, and appreciate will put you leaps ahead of your everyday folk? And so my goal here in this video is to help you remaster the way you perceive this one thing because this one thing has been the main culprit as to why the individuals you may look up to now, maybe the individuals you work for now, or the people you see making moves right now, they understand this. They've not only understood it, but they've mastered it and then they've remastered it. And so my goal is to help you remaster your perception of looking at this one thing. And if it works, you're already gonna give yourself a boost that you need to reach the level that you desire. Let's go. What's up everybody, welcome back to Sales Remastered. My name is Daniel and I'm your host. On this episode, I'm gonna talk about one thing that actually helps separate the top elite performers in any environment, any industry, any workforce, any any side of operations, operations, even sales. You know, it, it's just this, uh, it's this one thing that these particular individuals look at and the way they understand it, the way they use it, the way they manipulate it. And I hope that you can figure out a creative way to also look at it, understand it, and manipulate it for your favor. Now, before I tell you what this one thing is, let me go ahead and tell you why I came up with this particular topic. You know, I have, you know, it's the end of January and I'm, and I'm looking back at, at this month already. And I've got this uh, this top performer on my team. Her name's Monique. Shout out Monique if you're watching this. Man, it's it's insane. She's gonna submit and elevate over 30 loans this month. I think it's like 35. And this is in a refinance market. You tell me who's who's elevating, submitting deals at that amount uh, right now in refinance. This chick is gonna, if not hit 40 um, by today, she's she's definitely surpassed her quota, which was 20. And so, and so I, I'm thinking about, I'm, I'm looking at her and, you know, and I'm, and I'm trying to figure out what was the main culprit. And, you know, I give a shout out to every day. I, I, you know, as much as I can, I use her actions as kind of a, a reference point for the rest of the team, right? And I think I figured it out and I'm gonna share it with you. Now, before I even go into that, let me, let me explain. I, if, man, if I could find it, I'm gonna leave a link below this video. But about a year ago this time, I made a video that was actually about her. And I made it at a point where she was about to give up, where she was feeling burnt. She just felt like she kept hitting a wall. And, you know, she was, you know, like she's like she's hood, man. She's a, she's a G, you know, like she's polite. She's courteous. She's classy. She's a lady. But at the end of the day, she's a G. She'll let you know what's up. Like she, you know, what I mean, she's very independent. And I and I respect that. I hope my daughter has my daughters have that that type of character about them, too, as well. But where I'm getting at is about a year ago this time, I made a video that was directed to her and I actually vented through the video because I couldn't go in on her. You know, I have complete respect the way I was raised. I, I respect, you know, females and, and, and women. So I couldn't necessarily go in, but I went in on that video and it was about her giving up and, and, and I thought it was a common message. So I thought I'd share the content. Anyway, fast forward to the beginning of this year. This girl, man, lady is killing it, bruh. Like, man, she's lighting up the entire floor, the entire of all loan officers in the entire fucking company, bruh. She's boosted way past everyone else. I mean, the, the, the person right next to her in second place, she's almost doubled up their status. And so I wanna share with you how she's done it. And I used to think it was because of just her attitude and her, per, you know, her, her positivity, her optimism, her energy and her enthusiasm and the way she went in every single day. I used to think it was because she learn her tools and resources and assess her situation and assess her platform and you learn to maximize its usage. I used to think it was because she would come in extra early. I used to think it was because she came in on the weekends. And although those did play important roles as to why she's you know, experiencing the success that she's receiving right now, I figured out the one main thing. And it's the fact that she looks at this one thing just like the top elite performers do. And this one thing is time. It's her perception of time, the way she values her time, the way she understands her time, the way she manipulates her time. You see, 
what I've understood about top elite performers is that individuals who look at their time a little bit different than the rest are typically those who are more in a rush. And so they're making moves. They're, they're, they're on it. Does that make sense? Sometimes they walk faster than the rest. They talk faster than the rest. And they it's because their perception of their end result, they're in a hurry to get there. And so I know that may sound like impatience and we're taught from a young kid uh, growing up up until now, you know, impatience is bad. You know, you got to be patient. You got to be patient. I think there's a fine line, though, when, when it comes to patience and impatience and patience can be used for good. And but then again, it can also be used for bad. You see, the top elite performers, what I found are those who are making moves fast is just their perception of reaching their end goal a little bit faster. If they're, they're in a rush, they're in a hurry to get there because they 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 then maximize the usage of their time. And so they'll go into kind of a survival mode and look at resources and tools outside of the box than everyone else because everyone else are just going to look at that tool as that tool rather than look at that tool and say well what else can i do with it <laughs> right how can i maximize the usage of this and then use it while i maximize the usage of my time you see when we are working to build our one thing it's good to have patience it's good to have patience in regards to your your um you know your results but it's also good to be impatient to reach your result that's where the fine line comes that's where that balance comes you see when we look at our time we can look at it at, in so many different ways i'll give you just the main perspective right like well today's only monday <laughs> right well at least today's monday like i, I believe that in human nature not only salesmen not only loan officers have a difficult time of seeing two weeks in front of them let alone see a month a year and a couple years and what separates her monique is that she understands the power of her time and so even though she doesn't work 12 hour 13 hour days she don't need to even though she don't necessarily work full days on the week but will come in on the weekend she doesn't necessarily need to but she understands it's an, she understands it's an option and I got many top performers that are that are killing on my team. I'm only singling her out because about a year ago at this time, I made this one video that was about her and she was at a rock bottom about to give up. And so wherever this video finds you, if you if it finds you at a point where you're just not seeing the results and you're getting impatient, I need you to be impatient about reaching the destination, not impatient about, oh, woe is me. How come I'm not getting the Glengarry leads? How come I'm not making enough sales? Boo-boo, figure it out. You got nothing but time. You know, analyze your day. What time are you waking up? What time are you what time are you making moves? What do you do when you wake up? What time are you going to bed? What what do you use the hours of your day for? Does that make sense? So, are you in a rush to go home to spend 4 hours watching TV or are you in a rush to go home to spend 4 hours to building your craft and and building your outlet and building your bridge and and doing things that are meant for your future or are you just are, you know what I mean? Or are you just looking at time and like, man, I got plenty of time, right? The people are just patient. And, and I grew up in a day and age where it wasn't cool to walk fast. It wasn't cool to be in a hurry to do something. It was cool to walk slow as fuck. It was cool to stroll because that was that gangster way. It was cool to just, you know, be lit as fuck and just kind of go slow-mo. Cruise around and shit. Nowhere to go. Go hang out at the homie's house. Do nothing but wonder what the fuck are we gonna do tonight? That was it. Is because the the only thing I could see was for, uh, as fu as fast forward as I could see, it was just that day, <laughs> and it was just that weekend, right? It was just this immediate need. And when we understand time and we look at time in a different way and we analyze what we use our time for, because time is our most valuable asset. It's something that we can give, but we can never get back. It's something that we have, and it's limited. And every single day we spend it, every single day. Every single day we're running out. And when we take a step back, we analyze and be like, yo man, I don't give a fuck how old I am. I don't give a fuck how my past has been. All I know is that today I got a pocket full of time and I'ma spend it wisely. I'ma spend it on the actions that are gonna buy me back time. And so how do you buy yourself back time? You buy yourself back time by building your book of business. You buy yourself back time by understanding how to maximize your time. And so you're delegating these little admin tasks and you've earned your right to have assistance. You've earned your keep to get assistance to help you delegate those admin tasks, right? So I guess where I'm getting at 
is besides Monique and besides these top performers, besides anyone that you may look up to right now, I need you to understand that one thing that they do that separates them from the rest is they utilize their time efficiently and they value you, they value their time. You know, these top performers, by the time it hits 8 a.m., most of us are wiping boogers out of our eye. But these people have made so many different moves. There's this statistic that most billionaires and most millionaires wake up at 4 a.m. And this is one of the reasons why I adopted the philosophy. And I was like, bro, what the fuck am I going to do at 4 a.m.? <laughs> right? Like, what are you going to do? And so what I figured out, what you do is you actually feed yourself. You feed your mind. You feed your future because you're analyzing your time. That's all we're doing. Every single day, we got time to spend. Every single day, we got a pocket full of time and it's burning a hole in our pocket. So much so that it's just passing, by. it's dripping. It's just dripping all day. And, 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 and it's up to us of whether or not we're going to protect it and let it drip in areas that will feed us in the future. Make sense? So whatever it is that you're trying to do, whether you're trying to reach a top performer, whether you're trying to reach that income level, whether you're trying to reach maximum fitness, whatever it is you are trying to do, or whatever it is that you're, you're, you're moving forward to, understand that when you, when you sit and assess your time, you will actually reach that destination much faster because you will weed out every single thing that is not putting you closer to that one thing and when you weed out all those in, inactive or, or, or erroneous <laughs> activities and you only focus on on on, po on positive return actions right like if i take this action if i take this one hour and instead of sleep in or if i take this one hour instead of watch narcos and i put that one hour towards my self development or i put that one hour towards the gym or i put that one hour towards maybe assessing my resources or my CRM or the tools that I have or my past clients, I can actually feed my future. And here's the upside, my friend, is that when you get on this momentum, it becomes addicting. It becomes so addicting that everyone's gonna look at you a little bit weird and be like, how the fuck do you find time to do all that? Well, they found time because they made time, boo-boo. They found time because they appreciate their time and they made time because they're a thermostat. They are not a thermometer that's reacting off the environment and that's the main message of the day is take advantage of your time. Speaking of which, today is Thursday and Breakfast of Champions is back. It's going live in a couple hours. Catch me on YouTube and Facebook, Instagram, Twitter and be sure that you pick apart the message within these live streams. I spend 30 minutes with you every week to give you some information that's going to feed your brain and feed your pipeline, and thus feed your pocketbook and feed your mouth. <laughs> I hope you guys like the video. Please like, comment, and subscribe. If you haven't already, go get a copy of my free sales script. I've updated it. It's now got content on there for purchase loan officers. Whether you're taking inbound purchase leads or you're doing outbound purchase lead dials, I got you, boo-boo. It's got the, the text, the wording, the word tracking, the word play that is going to put you in front of those prospects and keep you in front of their mind and make you sound different than the rest. Go get it now. There's a link below this video. It's called Banker Script and uh, it's at salesremaster.com. I'll see you in the next video.